Next item, business is topical questions. Question one, Colin Keir. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its responses to the Edinburgh Airport report, the, the impact of reducing APD on Scotland's airports. Cabinet Secretary, Keith Brown. Uh, the Scottish Government welcomes this report from Edinburgh Airport. Uh, we have long called for the devolution of air passenger duty to the Scottish Parliament. Devolving APD as soon as possible is backed by leading aviation industry figures in Scotland and will help to unlock the country's full economic potential, bringing more international flights to and from Scotland, as well as cutting costs for passengers. We have confirmed that we intend to reduce APD by 50 per cent within the term of the next Parliament, with a view to eventual abolition of the tax when public finances allow. Colin Keir. Given the importance to the Edinburgh and wider Scottish economy, has the Scottish Government received any indication as to why APD could not be devolved sooner, as recommended under Calman and asked for by business leaders and, indeed, the cross-party group in aviation in this Parliament? Cabinet Secretary. As Colin Keir knows, the timetable for devolution of APD is a matter for the UK Government. No specific timetable has been given by the UK Government for passing the new Scotland Bill, but we do continue to press for this to happen as soon as possible. Only once the necessary legislation has been passed by the Westminster Parliament will the Scottish Parliament be able to legislate for a replacement tax better suited to the needs of Scotland's economy. Scottish Ministers, though, have written to the UK Government on several occasions, and most recently in January 2015, to call for the devolution of APD using the order-making power introduced for this purpose by the Scotland Act 2012, which would be a quicker route for devolution of this tax than via the new Scotland Bill. As uh, Colin Keir says, that would bring forward the benefits of this change that we propose to make. Mr Keir. Would the Minister agree that it is wrong that while the major hub facilities in the UK is, is London, Scottish passengers are at a financial disadvantage? And will he work with operators and airports to encourage more direct flights to and from Scottish airports? I am happy to give that undertaking and also to point out that we have been doing just that, uh, mainly through uh, incentive packages to different airlines and airports in terms of marketing and other benefits. And I think we have seen substantial success at our larger airports for doing that. But uh, Colin Keir is right to say we could massively increase that benefit to both airline, uh, airlines themselves and airports, but more particularly to individuals by having one of the most punitive taxes of its kind in the world, first of all reduced and then eliminated. David Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, does the Cabinet Secretary share my view that Scotland's airports would also benefit from the reintroduction of a route development fund, which came to an end in 2007? The RDF contributed to a dramatic improvement in Scotland's direct international air network, as over 50 new services were introduced. Will the Cabinet Secretary agree to meet with me to look at a European Commission compliance scheme funded from the APD budget? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I am, of course, happy uh, to meet with uh, uh, Lewis MacDonald in relation to that with, uh, with no, sorry, Dave Stewart uh, on that issue uh, with no problem at all. I would say, though, that, as I have just mentioned in response to Colin Keir, uh, we have undertaken a number of initiatives uh, which have been designed to maximise both the direct routes that we can have and also the number of passengers going to and from our airports. And, of course, if we can increase the number of direct routes, that also has a beneficial impact uh, on the environment. And we have done that within what we believe is a, a European uh, uh, Council, a European Commission compliance scheme. If he believes there is some other thing that we can do, then I am more than happy to meet with him to discuss that. But I think he should acknowledge that we have done a great deal to increase passenger numbers. I think the uh, airports around Scotland would say the same as well, Aberdeen, Glasgow and Edinburgh, with whom we work very closely. But, of course, I am happy to meet with him to discuss this further. Alex Johnson. The Minister will understand that the most vital routes run from Scottish airports are the routes run to London. And as a consequence, any attempt to devolve the tax can only ever result in us being able to abolish half of the tax paid by Scottish passengers travelling to London. So will he undertake to continue uh, to work with the UK Government to seek the abolition of the tax across the board, simply rather than simply devolving the right to Scotland to make decisions about our part of it? Well, of course, we have been asking for this for some time, but it is strange that the Conservative Government uh, or the Conservative Party, along with its uh, unionist colleagues, agreed this back in 2009 through the Calming Commission. They agreed to devolve this power. Six years on, we are still waiting for it to be devolved. So it seems a little bit rich to me for Alec Johnson to stand up and say it should be abolished. Of course, he can make that case to the UK Government, but it seems 
Not only have they not listened to us in relation to the last six years, but they're not listening to him either. Uh, I think underlying his uh, question, hopefully, is an acknowledgement that this is one of the most punitive taxes of its types in the world. It is a huge amount to discourage business coming to Scotland. I think the estimates I have, over £210 million pounds foregone by 2016 every year because of this tax. Other countries have realised how bad this is for their wider economy, especially uh, the Irish Republic and many others. So if Alec Johnson is willing to support us um, you know, in relation to trying to get uh, this, first of all, uh, reduced to 50 per cent, which I think is a very positive move, but ultimately towards its ab abolition, then uh, it seems to me that the UK government has not been listening to him as they have not been listening to us. And perhaps what they should now do is start to listen and get on with devolving this tax. George Adam. Thank you, President Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that a 50 per cent cut in APD could mean that Glasgow International Airport in Paisley could receive a projected extra 200,000 passengers? Is it not also the case that the sooner APD is devolved to Scotland, the sooner our airports, passengers and the economy will see the massive benefits detailed in this report? Cabinet Secretary. I'm glad that George Adams reminded us that Glasgow Airport is in Paisley, and he's quite right to point out that the, there'd be a massive benefit to Glasgow Airport. They've said the same thing to us, as have the airlines. And it is remarkable, presiding officer, that when you've gone to, as I have, these meetings over the past four or five years, where you have all the airports in Scotland, or all the major airports in Scotland, and also at most of the major airlines, sometimes airlines who in other uh, situations, we'd be at each other's throats in a competitive environment, sit together, say the same thing. The benefits in Glasgow would be the benefits in Edinburgh, would be the benefits in Aberdeen throughout the country, but most particularly, there'd be benefits to the individuals who currently have to uh, uh, endure one of the highest taxes of its kind in the world. And even better for the Scottish economy, you would have an increase in passengers coming to this country, many of whom we know have said, no, we're not going to go to the UK, we're going to go to France. You know, if they're coming from the South America and various other parts of the world, they'll go to France, not least because the visa requirements are less onerous, but especially because the airport uh, uh, tax that is applied to them is much less in those countries. Let's get that business back and let's get this tax devolved. Patrick Harvey. Thank you. The economics of this report seem pretty spurious, given the claim that APD is a barrier to growth, when we know that aviation levels have continued to grow, and even in this report, projections show an expectation they'll continue to grow. But astonishingly, aside from the economics, there's not a word in this report about the environmental or social impact uh, of this potential change. Given the Scottish Government is now committed not just to scrapping, but instead to replacing APD with a different tax regime, what can the Minister tell us about how that new regime will be assessed, not just in terms of its economic, but its social and environmental impact, so that any future decision can be informed by something rather more thorough than this transparent piece of industry spin? Cabinet Secretary. I think it's also true to say that other reports, other than the one uh, referred to by Patrick Harvey by Edinburgh Airport, have also pointed to some of these benefits as well. And the benefit I would point out, as I have done before to Patrick Harvey, in terms of the environment, is if we are able, through the reduction and then perhaps elimination of this tax, is to make sure that we can have more direct flights to Scotland, which cuts out the more uh, environmentally damaging shorter flights, which we have to have to connect for longer flights uh, around the world. So there could be an uh, environmental benefit from this. He is right to say, of course, that there is likely to be a small net increase as he's heard before in the past from uh, ministerial colleagues like Paul Whitehouse in terms of emissions from reducing APD, but there will be a positive impact for passengers, businesses and costs and connectivity from taking this action. Uh, the APD assessment takes no account of other trends in the aviation, aviation sector, such as the improving fuel efficiency of jet aircraft, something we'd want to encourage. So I think there are pluses and minuses in relation to this. There are pluses for the environment. There's a huge plus for the economy and for the businesses which comprise our airports. And that's why we intend to move forward as soon as we have the power to reduce this tax by half with a view to eliminating it altogether. Thank you. That ends topical questions. We are now moving straight on to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion number one.